the sea of reefs and corals, the land of luscious forests and tropical breezes, a captivating blend of diverse cultures and doubles, <laughs> lots of doubles. This is called doubles, a local dish. It's where basically a chickpea sandwich. There you go. In the heart of the Caribbean Sea, amidst a vibrant tapestry of cultures and traditions, a profound chapter in the history of faith unfolds. They didn't know a soul. He created a hysteria. Bobby Muhammad Ali Saki. He had a he who he, he was sat in the class. The Lahori Jamaat had actually been there even before our Jamaat. My father was the first indigenous missionary to go enter Jamia. After that I came out and I w walked around the back of the car and I saw that my father was on the ground with a big pool of blood. My father felt it so much as though he lost a, a, his, a blood brother. I received the, the glad tidings that Hazur was coming to visit. I travel a lot from east to west, north to south, and I've been able to meet people from different countries of the world. And one of the missions of the Ahmadiyya community in Islam is to bring mankind together. May 7, 1952, the first ever Ahmadiyya Muslim missionary, Maulana Muhammad Ishaq Saki Sahib, arrived in Trinidad by boat with his family. He was sent by Hazrat Muslim Maud, may Allah be pleased with him, to propagate the message of Islam across the island. My father came when he was 27 years old here in Trinidad. He was ferocious in his preaching. When that man comes and you invite 50 people, you have to make sure and cook food for about 300 people because they only have to hear Mobi Saki is coming and they will arrive. There are a few faithful Muslims, including Mr. Juman Ali and Mr. George Hossein, who first met the missionary and would be instrumental in propagating the message of Islam. Early Jamaats were established in Diego Martin, Freeport, and Marabella. There were so many people who actually flocked to him, Nana Ahmadi Muslims, Hindus and Christians, and they listened to him because he came with a subtle message, a message filled with hope. And people up to this day will say that he is an angel without wings. And that was because of Ahmadiyyat. It was because of his identity being an Ahmadi. During our team's tour of the vibrant island of Trinidad, we had the honor to visit every Ahmadi mosque. Let us first go to Karatal, straight to the geographical heart of the nation. In Karatal, he started giving Mukta lessons, and there were about eight or ten families, the older heads who came. Under the guidance of Hazrat Khalifa Tun Masih, Malana Saki Saheb was able to build the first mosque of the Jamaat in Karatal. The land was donated by Yad Ali Saheb and his brother. The construction was completed in 1962. It was made up of uh, palm branches and leaves. We call it a touched house. And that is where the early uh, Ahmadis started praying. Among the early converts in Trinidad and Tobago was Muhammad Hanif Yaqub and his family. My father started asking questions and when he heard of the answers that he got from the Ahmadi missionary, he was totally satisfied. In 1953, he and his two brothers were the first to take Bayat at the hands of that missionary. He played a significant role in promoting the Jamaat's teachings and was later sent to Pakistan in 1954 to study in Jamia Ahmadiyya. My father was the first indigenous uh, missionary to go enter Jamia. When he came back, he was the junior missionary to Movisaki. Again, they worked assiduously to help the Jamaat spread the Jamaat as far as possible. And he actually took over from the late uh, Mulbi Muhammad Isaac Saki. That time he was ailing. And this young man did a human service. He, did, he worked extremely hard in all the corners of this country 
he preached the message of Ahmed Yet. He worked tirelessly to uplift the community and successfully constructed the first mosque of the community in Freeport in 1967, named Masjid Nasser. <laughs> Throughout its brief history, the Jamaat in Trinidad and Tobago had encountered numerous trials and tribulations. The path to conversions proved arduous, compounded by the pre-existing establishment of the Lahori Jamaat. So one of the interesting things about the Caribbean generally is that the Lahori Jamaat had actually been there even before our Jamaat. So they were there in the 1930s. They came there as traders and businessmen and so on. Some of the few remaining leaders of the Lahori Jamaat used to come there from Pakistan because this was one of the few places where there were some Lahori Ahmadis in some number. There was a missionary by the name of Mori Ansari. He said that he don't belong to Lahori. He don't belong to any Jamaat. He is just a missionary. And he used to preach. And he accepted the Prophet Messiah's teachings. And one day, while he was putting up the dome on the mosque, they were talking about Ahmadis. And it so happened, news came that an Ahmadi missionary is coming to Trinidad. And he was very excited, only to realize when that when Morbi Isaac Saki came here, immediately the very next day, he turned his tongue and said that he's a Lahori Ahmadi and he do not accept the Pamun Messiah. Certain members of the Jamaat gradually distanced themselves contributing to the prevailing difficulties. So in 1983, he was sent to Guyana, and then missionary from Guyana, who was Molana Aslam Qureshi Sahab, he came to Trinidad. In 1983, Molana Aslam Qureshi Sahib arrived in Trinidad. He worked hard to spread the teachings of the community and foster greater unity among the members. There was the existing Jamaat, which had some, uh, you know, there was an Amla and there were an active uh, group of people. But there were also uh, different sets of people who had, for one reason or the other, drifted away from Jamaat over the, over the years and decades, in some cases. And when my father came, was appointed, they slowly started approaching my father. And whatever their, their troubles were, or issues were, they came and spoke to my father. And I remember listening to some of those things, and his guidance usually was, you know, write to the Khalifa Waqt and unconditionally apologize for whatever has happened and come back, you know, a, a new person. By the grace of Allah, um, several people, many people, uh, rejoined Jamaat who had drifted away from Jamaat. One of his greatest achievements was the construction of the first mosque in Siparia, located in the southern part of Trinidad. <laughs> One of the close friends of Malana Qureshi was Mirza Sakur Beg, a respected member of the community. He was once a bitter opponent of Ahmadiyyat, but was later introduced to the true teachings by Malana Saki Sahib when he moved to Siparia in 1957. When Malana Qureshi came to Trinidad, he visited him and then they, were, they stuck up a friendship. He really, really loved Ma Maulana Qureshi and he considered him a brother. And he, he would come home to, for lunch and they would always be talking and he'd be gaining knowledge and asking questions. And um, because of his love for reading, and he loved to debate, so he would debate a lot about religion. And he decided that he would read the books of the um, Jamaat, the Promised Messiah Islam, so to prove from their own books that Ahmadiyyat is wrong. The more he read, the more he realized this is the truth. And he spoke to my mother at length and he realized that he had to accept it. At the time, Mirza Sakur Beg was serving as the Imam of a non Ahmadi mosque in Siparia for 23 years. The people loved him very much, but when he studied Ahmadiyyat and he accepted Ahmadiyyat, that was in um, 1984. He was asked to leave. He went straight from being loved to being hated. Despite facing opposition from some members of his former congregation, 
By the grace of Allah, Mirza Sakur Beg, along with a few other members of the Jamaat, were able to construct a new mosque in 1985. Mr. Kamar Ali. He donated this piece of land, so we would do namaz at his home and he donated this lovely piece of land at the back of his home. So immediately my father set in motion to build this mosque. This is our mosque here, our branch at Safaria, across here, there's mission hall. Presently we're in the process of construction, we're constructing a play park and a car park. Imam Beg remained the Imam for the mosque until Maulana Muzaffar arrived in 2004, by which time all of his seven children and grandchildren residing in Trinidad had accepted Ahmadiyyat, and several other families had joined the Jamaat. One of his daughters lived in the very southern, southwest tip of Trinidad called Ikakas. The, the love that I would feel there with her, anytime in fact when I would go, she would always be, she, her eyes would always be watery and she's always panicking or worrying a little bit, saying that, you know, I can't believe a missionary is coming to my house and I'm not able to serve them the way I would like to. When she passed away, all the people of the village, they would all say that, you know, an angel passed away. That this lady, she is the one who brought Islam in that area and she taught them everything. August 10th. 1985. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Trinidad and Tobago was facing relentless opposition from its enemies who were determined to undermine its progress. Unfortunately, tragedy struck the community on that fateful night. The incident happened from my recollection around just after Maghrib. Uh, my father needed to go some, to some Ahmadi's house so he wanted to borrow a book. Uh, the gentleman's name was Isfahani Ojir. So I went with my father. On the highway when we were going there, there was a car following us. So again, as I said, these kind of things happen on and off. What happened is that it was a white Jeep. It would come in front of us, and then it would slow down and force us to overtake him. And then he would come around again. And so he did that two or three times on the main highway that we were heading north on. This person's house was the last house in the village. And as it happens, that day they had uh, just poured concrete in their driveway. Uh, we went to their house, uh, met them, my father took the book. When we came back, we needed to do a U-turn, or we needed to turn around on that road. It was a very narrow road, and the driveway itself was, you know, raw concrete. If, if, if concrete hadn't set. So instead of turning around there, we went down the hill. There was a little stream with a little bridge on it. We over that bridge, and then across that, around some corner, and there was a, what, what I would call jungle or bush there. Basically, there were no houses there. And then there was a clearing on the right-hand side to the direction we were headed. I noticed that there were some cars there. Uh, so I said, again, I just commented to my father that there are some cars there. And he said, oh, there are some farms with the back there. Maybe there are some workers from that farm. In that clearing, my father turned the car to turn around. As soon as, soon as he turned there and stopped the car, at the moment, even just he was stopping the car, some men came running out of the car, of the other cars that were there. And they had guns in their hands. So one or two went to my father's side, I think two of them. One came to my side with a gun and kind of pushed me down with, like, with a gun. And there was, they shouted some words, but I don't remember what the words were. just noise, basically. And then just within seconds, there was a shot, the sound of a shot. I, was, I had been pushed down, so I was ducked down. And you know, my, my heart you know, was, was racing very much. So just after a few seconds, I looked up and I saw that they, the same Jeep, that white Jeep, and men were running into those cars. As I looked, they ran, they drove away. And the car was on and it was just, there was silence. After that I came out and I w walked around the back of the car and I saw that my father was on the ground with a big pool of blood. And I, I remember when I, when I saw my father, this like a, an involuntary sound of, you know, you know, pain came from my throat basically. I scream, whatever you want to say. Uh, he had, he, obviously he had died already. <laughs> अब मैं एक दर्दनाक खबर से भी आपको मुतले करता हूँ जो बहुत मेरे लिए इंतहाई दर्द का मुझे भी बनी मगर 
ये है ऐसी चीज़ जैसा कि मैंने कहा था कि इस दर्द में एक अल्लाह की तरफ से एक एजाज भी पाया जाता है एहसान भी पाया जाता है ये वो दर्द है जो अपने प्यारों को अता करता है हमेशा ये वो दर्द है जो अपने दुश्मनों को अता नहीं किया करता यानी शहादत का दर्द अभी चंद दिन पहले हमारे एक बहुत ही मुखलिस और फिदाई मुजाहिद इस्लाम वाकफ ज़िंदगी कुरैशी कुरैशी मोहम्मद असलम साहब को बड़े ालमाना तौर पर कत्ल करवाया गया है अल्लाह ताला शरीरों से ख़ुद इंतकाम ले और जहाँ तक हमारा ताल्लुक है हमने वही इंतकाम लेना है कि बदी का बदला हुसन से अता करना है और यही हमारी कोशिश रहेगी इट वॉज रियली वेरी शॉकिंग माई फादर वॉज नॉट एट होम सो समी है and that was a very hard thing my father felt it so much as though he lost a, a his a blood brother because he his, his brother wasn't inclined to islam so and his life was islam so when he found when he found this connection he was he found a brother hazur said that i was so deeply saddened and hurt by, by this matter that for Two days or so, I could not meet people's eyes or gaze. I didn't want people to, I didn't want to look at even anyone. That in case they can see what condition my heart is in, I was in so much pain from this incident. Shortly after, the family flew to London and remained in close company of Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masi the Fourth. Just a few weeks after I got there, I saw a dream in which I saw my father, and I saw in the dream that. but my father is somehow back somewhere i i don't remember what the location was and he's back and i i was very su- surprised and i said bhaiya up you know how, how how come you're back you you know you 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 were martyred and and then he just he i touched his anguti you know the the, the ring the lastella ring and he said bhala sh- shahidon ko bhi ko maar sakta hai you know can can someone kill a, a martyr and so it was a nice dream and i used to go and tell hazur everything so i took a you know arranged mulaqat went to hazur and i related this dream and as i related the dream i broke down and started crying like you know really crying so again hazur comforted me gave me his handkerchief and said he said some words to me which helped me immensely he said isko mamle ko allah taala pe chhod do leave this matter to god allah taala iska badal lega god will take revenge for this matter and as i heard those words they acted like a bomb on me immediately and so immediately after that i i can tell you honestly as you know god is my witness that i lost all anxiety or fear or any even memory of pain even everything kind of just went very calm the martyrdom of molana aslam qureshi sahib impacted greatly upon the entire jamaat ahmadiyya of trinidad and tobago the community was in total shock and there was the fear that the community would suffer great setbacks anedo wo bhi hai kuch jo ke tere by the grace and mercy of allah who planted the seed of ahmadiyya through the blessed hand of the promised messiah peace be upon him the jamaat pushed through and survived this great catastrophe I received a message that he wanted to see me. And when I went, he beckoned me to sit down. Then Hazur said, "When you go, take those people who actually are prepared to work with you. Take them along and work with them. Those who wouldn't, who will stay on the fence, of course, pray for them." And that is how we came to trinidad the jamaat had shrunk to a very small amount the jamaat was in disarray and then there was no missionary and there was no one <clears throat> holding the jamaat together when i came in the story regarding the assassination of the late qureshi sah was hanging over my head i was very frightened i was very worried I was terrified luckily enough 
I was taken to the first missionary's residence to meet with him at Barataria, he and his wife. As soon as I saw them, I felt so much of a relief. They gave me paratha and uh, also chicken uh, stew. And after I had eaten, I start, started falling asleep on myself. And then the late Saki Sahib asked me, you are sleepy, go and then sleep. I didn't know what to, to say, but then he led me on that go and sleep in my room, on my bed. I was completely flabbergasted in terms of look at me, who I am, uh, in terms of my ethnicity. It doesn't matter, of course I'm a missionary, but I was looking deep inside me. I'm an African, a slave of Khilafat. This man, a Pakistani, a missionary, to sleep in his bed. I slept like a baby, like a log, because I had not slept for more than one week. And uh, that was the, the beginning of my relief. That was, that was the turning point. The Jamaat started taking its position as it is today, taking shape, and, and we start working together with him as best as possible. Jamaat Ahmadiyya became very known, very popular. Lahori's were really, really popular in this country. There was no intention of mine because Ghana, we don't have any Lahori influence. And I never thought that I want to influence them or anything for that matter, I think. Allah uh, did that. Uh, we started the Bligi program whereby we would go to different areas. So there was this young doctor and he was very enthused about the whole program and he wants to ask questions. And uh, from there, he used to come to the mission house and every day he would be calling, every day. And you see that he was very, he, very, very impressed. With the guidance of beloved Hazur, many devout Lahoris had converted to Islam Ahmadiyyat. When they came in, that was the cream of the Lahori Jamaat. The missionary became very, very antagonistic against me and sending words of abuses. I didn't do anything. And calling me names, people come to tell me about it. You know, naive, I was naive. But, it is Allah who did that. At first, we belonged to the Ahmadiyya Anjuman Lahori group. And then my younger brother, Dr. Kamarin Muhammad, he is the one who really got in contact with the Jamaat and he joined the Jamaat. And then we um, followed him after that. I took bayat at the hands of uh, Fort Khalifa in July 1991. I joined around the same time my, my brother, but I was in Canada at the time. I got a dream, and in the dream also, I saw somebody with a turban. At that time, I didn't know about Huzur wearing that, to that extent. And I was seeing myself as though I was in a car, sitting at the back, and the driver in front was wearing this turban. And we were going up the hilly terrain, up and down and so on. I didn't know what the dream meant at that time. But when I came to Trinidad back home, the first Friday Juma we attended was in a place called Karatal. That was one of our new mosques built there. And the terrain was exactly like that. It was just uncanny. <laughs> it came just like that. Yes, so came from... I didn't need any more convincing that this is the yeah. Juma we have to be in. I dreamt that we were sleeping one night and it was time for Salat. I was waking, waking up for Salat and there was the old mosque that we were attending, the old members and everything. And when I looked, they were facing west. They were praying facing west. And I stood and I said, 
it means to me that they're in the wrong direction. And for some reason, I never joined that Salat. The next day when I talked about it, I spoke to Amir Sahib about the dream as well. And in my mind, it was clear that Allah was leading, telling me that that was the wrong direction. By the sheer grace of Allah, in 1991, Trinidad and Tobago had the honor of hosting Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed, may Allah have mercy on him, the fourth Khalifa of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. I received the, the glad tidings that Hazur was coming to visit uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And when I relayed the message to the membership, they were very enthused. Everybody was very happy that Huzur was coming to this country for the first time. We put our heads together and we had everything done quickly, efficiently, to the best of our ability to ensure that our Khalifa is treated as he should be. Yeah, this is our beloved Hazur's Namaz room, which we cherish very dearly. And this is his Jai Namaz that he used. We preserve it. So this is the bench here that I used to lie down. I never used to sleep uh, in case Hazur needs anything special. Or if we hear him cough, or even touch the door, we rush like firefighters. During Hazur's week-long tour, the schedule was packed with meetings of various news stations, as well as Jamaat members, pioneer Ahmadis, and visiting different mosques around the country. We spent those very enjoyable days. We even took him to Maracas Beach very early in the morning. And we went there and he was going to spend some time and walk on the beach. You know, he said he enjoyed that walking on the beach there. And then we um, came back. So those are my memories about him. And there we were with him everywhere, listened to him, his lectures, his questions and answers. And we also had our Jalsa, annual Jalsa at that time. We were very blessed to have his presence here in this mosque. He had given the name of this mosque, Masjid Shahada because Maulana Qureshi had recently been martyred. So we got a nice plaque made and Hazu graciously um, came and officially inaugurated the mosque. He was right there in front of us and he just had an awe of, you know, of peace and piety. We took Hazu around to all the mosques that we had at that time. His first visit was a Freeport Mosque and we had a lecture that night there, yeah, and a lot, lot of people were invited. Ahmadis, non Ahmadis were there. He also came in this mosque, Macbean Mosque here, yeah, and he spent, he spent one uh, lecture session here. And he also went to the Karatal Mosque. And because we had just completed the Karatal Mosque the night for him, in preparation for his visit. So he went to a totally new mosque. So we went and visited there, and we led um, at his also a lecture session there. I travel a lot from east to west, north to south, and I've been able to meet people from different countries of the world. And one of the missions of the Ahmadiyya community of Islam is to bring mankind together. If you want one common color for the whole mankind, what would be the better than the color of Allah? And what is the color of Allah? That is his attitude. So one important message which I deliver to all the people is this. Try to get died in Allah's attitude. Only then you can unify the mankind. It was very fruitful. We spent our time as much as possible with Hazur. Well. Uh, read Namaz as much as possible as well. And you know, that was it. The visit was too short. <laughs> there is no better opportunity in life to have that touch between God and you through our Khalifa. And if he led the world, the entire world, the entire world would be heaven on earth.
میں بسر ہو زندگی ساری خلافت کے حصائے میں بسر ہو زندگی ساری روشنی کا سفر روشنی کا سفر Surrounding the visit of Hazur, the Jamaat was progressing in leaps and bounds. There were more mosques and mission houses acquired, rebuilt, and constructed. One of these buildings was the reconstruction of the Karatal Mosque. Due to the deteriorating condition of the Karatal Mosque, the Jamaat decided to have it rebuilt, and Beitul Allah was completed in 1990. <laughs> عاشقی کا سفر یوں ہی جاری رہے عاشقی کا سفر The Ahmadiyya Jamaat has been actively engaged with the community in Trinidad and Tobago, showcasing their efforts in creating awareness of the Jamaat's teachings and building relationships around the country. Yeah, the people in the surrounding area, most of them are Christians and few Muslim, but as we have very good connection with them, Usually we go to see them, share leaflet with them, talk to them. Any program we have, we invite them. They've been accepting us and this is how we interact with them and we also try our best to convey the message of Jama to them. And connection between us and them is wonderful by the grace of Allah. <laughs> From a tiny hamlet in Qadian, to the corners of the earth, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat has displayed remarkable resilience and growth. Despite facing persistent opposition, they have not only persevered, but also flourished, spreading their message of peace and unity to the furthest corners of the earth. The Jamaat in Trinidad and Tobago is just one of many of those locations with a remarkable testament to the triumph of the human spirit through trust in Allah. They began with only a handful of members and flourished to over 1,500 devotees. They have shown that in the face of adversity, each droplet of hope has the potential to create waves in an expansive ocean of endless possibilities. <laughs> Kadiyah se chala, Kadiyah se chala, Kadiyah se chala.